Okay, sunny, nice. Ooh. Yo. Okay. All right. Nice. Oh. All right. Messages. Okay. Start the day. What's good, buddy? Welcome to another episode of Unscrambling the Edit. If you're new to the series, I basically recreate effects and transitions from videos that I've seen, and then I teach you how to do them. This time, we're actually recreating a video that I made during the midst of this, you know, pandemic flu thing that's going on. And I, I called it the I-ring or something, but it did really, really well, so I'm very happy about it. And I got a lot of questions of how to make this effect. So in the spirit of this series, we are going to break down how to make a hologram come out of your ring. Before you actually start shooting, there are a couple of things you might want to take into account. Do you remember that this effect is supposed to sell that you have a hologram coming out of your ring, which is something that many people aren't very familiar with because it doesn't exist. So number one, your ring must be visible because that is the source of the hologram. Number two, before you start shooting is to come up with the idea of what it is you're going to be actually looking at through the hologram. For example, in the first one, I was looking at a post that my girlfriend made of her and I, and I was reacting to it. In this most recent one, I was basically scrolling through different feeds. So you kind of want to have an idea before you start filming of what it is exactly that you're going to react. Number three is to prepare yourself for some Oscar winning acting. You really want to sell the fact that you're actually looking at a hologram. So when the hologram comes up, make sure you're looking at the hologram. Also figure out how you're going to turn it on. You're either going to twist it, tap it, whatever. Number four is the camera positioning. I chose to have the camera in front of me at a 45 degree angle so you can see my reactions and the back of the hologram. This does mean that the hologram will have to be flipped so your viewers aren't actually going to be able to read what it is that they see so take that into account if you want to have them read you're going to want to be kind of over the shoulder but you won't be able to see the reaction so maybe if you're not that good at acting but five is your camera settings you want to make sure that you're shooting at a high shutter speed because you're going to be doing some tracking in this effect and when you're tracking if you have a lot of motion blur it's going to be very difficult for the software to track the points i shot this one at one over one hundredth of a second and i was recording at 25 frames per second and with all that said and done let's get into making the hologram so the way that I got my hologram screen recordings was by going on Google Chrome, going to Instagram, BBC News and weather sites and then hitting F12 on my keyboard. Now this brings up the inspect element interface and I know it looks really weird because it's like HTML, but all you have to do is on the top right where it says toggle device toolbar, if you click it, it basically takes you from desktop mode to mobile mode. I essentially just recorded using my screen recorder that mobile section. I also found a loading screen to use when the hologram first pops up. So I then went into Premiere Pro and then selected the clip I wanted to use and did right click replace with After Effects composition. So now we're in Adobe After Effects with my clip. I got myself in quite a funny face. And we also brought in all the assets into our project panel. So the first thing you want to do is actually track your ring because that is kind of the foundation of this effect. So if you go to our tracker, if you don't have this, just go to window and click on tracker. And then we want to do track motion. Uh, then we get put into the layer tab and we have a tracking point. So if we just drag this onto our ring and all you have to do now is just click the analyze forward button and it'll start tracking your ring. So once we have our tracking points, we want to make a null object by just right clicking in this open space doing new null object. And basically the null object will function as a box where we're going to store all of the tracking data so it can be referenced later by other things that we put into it. So now that we have our null object, we go to our tracker where it says edit target and we want to click null three, click OK. And then we want to do apply, apply X and Y. And I've actually scrubbed through. You can see that this box is now tracked with our ring. So now let's actually build out the hologram. So to do that, we bring in the screen grabs that I got, as you can see, I got some some Instagram shots. Essentially, I wanted to react to only from here to there. So at the beginning, I just press Alt left bracket, 
that kind of cut anything before that. And when I get to the end of the re reaction shot, say this, I'll do Control Shift D, which splits the layer. And once you've done this for all your clips, organize them to come up at the same time that you're reacting to them. For example, the first thing I want to see is the Financial Times. And I kind of react to it. I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to see the news right now. It's too early. So once you have it timed, you can now actually pre-compose, which is basically just you selecting all of the screen assets, doing right click, pre-compose. So let's actually reduce the opacity of this by pressing T on our keyboard and then just reducing it like that. So now we're going to arrange the hologram to look like it's coming out of our ring. But remember, we're looking behind the hologram, so everything's gonna be opposite. So if we click S on our keyboard, we bring up the scale, uncheck constraint proportions. On this scale, we do minus 100. We actually flip it horizontally. So now in the hologram, I'm making this a 3D layer by clicking on this 3D box. If you don't have these options, right here where it says toggle switches slash modes, click there and it comes up. Cool, and now using the rotation tool, we're going to actually rotate our hologram. We can also change the scale. Then this is very much dependent on how yours will look. So doing this roughly, it looks something like this. You can see we've got our perspective. Now, if you remember how we had the null object right here, and if we actually get this pick whip and drag it to our null object, and if we actually scrub through it, we can see that our hologram has now been tracked to our hand. And look at that, only a few steps and it already looks like a hologram. Ah, oh, so good. Now, oh, this is the fun part. This is where you actually make the hologram look like a hologram. The way that I did it is I went to the effects and presets and I searched TV. And there are three different TV effects, but I used bad TV three week. And as you can see, I mean, this looks a bit unrealistic in my opinion anyway, but we're gonna make our own effect. But basically you get four effects applied onto your hologram. You get a wave warp, which is basically what's given these kind of lines. You can see that one of these buttons is red and that's because it's actually automated. Uh, that's just part of the stock effect. So to get rid of that, you just hold Alt or Option on your, on your Mac and you click on the stopwatch next to wave height and that resets it. So with the wave warp effect, you get different wave types, you get noise, you get sign. I used noise in mine because it kind of gave it the most realistic example. The wave height is pretty much how separated the wave is. And by wave, I mean the wave happening right here. And if you go frame by frame, you can see that the wave actually moves and that's controlled by the wave speed. So the color balance effect basically adds like a bluish tint. So I, I left that there as it was default. Noise, I left it default. And then Venetian blinds add this kind of line effect. And I think I made my width four instead of five because I didn't want it to be too obvious. But yeah, definitely play around with these settings until you get what you want. But it doesn't really matter what you choose. What I'm gonna show you now is actually how you should actually change these depending on what's happening in your footage for example you look at the beginning it starts off thick and that's because you can see my settings now my wave height is 135 and the width is one but as soon as um, the screen actually appears it kind of goes up to have a wave height of 82 a wave width of two and then it goes back down to three and three which kind of gives gives it that kind of stable look and essentially, I added little glitch moments every time I kind of moved a lot. For example, here, as you can see, I move a little bit to the left to kind of emphasize that I'm moving and that the hologram is interacting with the air, if that makes sense. And you can see that as I swipe, you see the screen glitches left and right. So I'll leave this up to you, but once the hologram has been completed, you have two options. If you want attention to detail, you can add reflections to your eyes of the hologram like I did in the video. Very simply, you track each eye position, you copy the tracking points to a brand new null object, then you duplicate the hologram and you just pick whip it to that null object. And then whenever you close your eye, you just want to reduce the opacity and increase it again when you open the eye. And then you have 
reflections on your eye of the hologram. These are very subtle and quite difficult to see if you're watching this on your mobile phone, but if you're doing it for a, a video on the screen, then it'll be something cool that you can add on. The other thing you can do is just jump straight into the glow on your face. So again, very simple. You just copy over the hologram effect. You make it fit your face or whatever it is the glow is going to go on. Then you add a Gaussian blur and you increase the blur until you can't really make out the details. So once you've got that done, that's pretty much it for the hologram. The other things you want to do now is, is personal preference, but I made my ring glow to show the notification come up. Uh, this is very simply just getting um, a pen tool and drawing out a line and then I just frame by frame move the path to match the ring and it's only for a few frames because it's just a very quick notification and then the other thing is to add a little tail underneath the hologram it's a very simple step I just drew out a shape I added it to the same tracker for the ring and I just reduced the opacity and, and copied over all of the effects from the hologram onto it so as you can see here I had to mask my finger because it was kind of crossing it I'm not sure if that's very realistic in the real world if that was to happen but I left that there and the those are all of the effects for the hologram. Right, so now we're in Premiere Pro and the final thing that you wanna do is add sound design and then do a quick grade if you want to. For sound design, I pretty much me finding notification sounds, the sound of an iPhone unlocking because it's an eye ring. But the most important thing was that I added a low pass filter to kind of give the illusion that we're hearing it from the speakers of the ring. Because if we were to listen to all the sound clearly with all the bass and it was crisp, it kind of sounds like audio that you added on. If you play music, out of your phone, you're not gonna hear the clear, thick bass of something. If you wanna learn more about audio editing techniques that filmmakers must know, I'm in a video here going over three essential ones that you definitely wanna learn. Feel free to check it out. So once I added all of my sound effects, the last thing was to add a quick grade. That's pretty much it. That is how you make a hologram come out of your ring. If you have any questions about this, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Uh, and if you liked this episode of Unscrubbing the Edit, make sure you leave it a like so I know that you guys are enjoying it and other people can see it too. And if you wanna keep in touch with the series, definitely click that subscribe button as it helps me out. And it helps you out because now you're subscribed to high level content. With all that being said and done, I will see you in the next video.